All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about climate change, and you've probably seen it in the news before. Maybe you haven't, maybe you have. Most of the time, if you've seen it in the news, it looks something like this. Climate change is going to cause the end of the world. We need to do something soon. If we don't act now, if we don't act now, we're all going to die. Or maybe this. Climate change is a hoax. It's no big deal. It's a natural earth process. Nothing's going to happen. So usually the information is presented in like one of two extreme sides, where it's either this or it's either this. Uh, my job today is not to convince you of either one, but just to show you some facts. And we're going to learn that yes, the climate is changing. Yes, it's getting warmer. The overall average Earth temperature has been rising. And maybe it's due to humans, maybe it's not, but there are some things that we can do. Okay, this is the first graph I'm going to show you guys. Hopefully you can see me. If not, I'll have to refilm. But this is a graph that shows the level of carbon dioxide with the temperature. And this was gathered mostly through ice cores. They drill holes in super old ice glaciers. And there's little air bubbles. And from that, they can deduce what the CO2 level of the air was, along with how the temperature was during that same time period. And so if you look at the graph, you can see there's a pretty good correlation between carbon dioxide, which is the blue lines, and temperature, which is the red lines. And so whenever you see a jump up in either one, they both follow each other. Now, if you look really carefully, the people on this side over here that are going to say, oh, it's a natural earth process, they'll point out that the level, or the, excuse me, the temperature a lot of times will drop before the level of carbon dioxide drops, right? So over here, carbon dioxide is higher than the temperature, and they'll say, well, yeah, they're related, but really the temperature is not that much related to carbon dioxide. But really, you can see, I mean, every time there's a jump, both of them jump, right? Big jump here, both of them jump. Big jump, both of them jump. So let's look at the data. Not going back 400,000 years like this does. This goes way back in time. Let's look at the more recent data to see what's going on there. So this is some data going back 1,000 years, but this is only the level of CO2 data. So I am still going to look and find the CO2 compared with the temperature data. But just looking at the data from the past 1,000 years, uh, these are three different measurements of CO2 taken three different ways. But you can all see all of them are basically the same until about the end of the 1800s, right in the middle of the 1800s. We've got the Industrial Revolution. We've got a bunch of factories being built. We've got high levels of CO2 being released, and uh, the level of CO2 goes up quite a bit. All right, so this is the temperature from the last 1,000 years. Again, a bunch of different readings taken from different places around the Earth, but basically showing the exact same thing. Uh, this goes back a thousand years, so starting here, you start getting temperature readings, and they're basically all doing the same thing. We get right up around this late late 1800s to 1900s into the 20th century, and all of the temperatures again show a reading that it is increasing. That uh, would mirror what happened to the CO2, where it's pretty much the same up until again uh, that industrial revolution, where humans are having a bigger impact on how much CO2 there is, and we see an increase in temperature. Now, I want to take a moment to point out something. I've got all of these different graphs for all of this different information, and all of them kind of show the same thing, but all of them are a little bit different. And the thing I want to point out is, like, this one, environmentalgraffiti.org, uh, what's that, skepticalscience.com, uh, what's up with that.com? We got Wikipedia. We know anyone can put anything there. I mean, we got all these different websites that have all these different stuff, and so it's really confusing and it's really hard to find what's the truth, what's the right data, right? All right, guys, this is where I'm at. This is the, the last thousand years. We've got the blue in the level of CO2 that we've had in our atmosphere, we've got the red as the temperature in Celsius. And notice on this side, this is uh, the change in temperature, okay? 
So overall global, global average temperature in red, and right again, right at the 19th, late 18th, right in the 19th, going up into the 2000s industrial revolution, we've got this blue line that starts jumping up. And for a little while, the red line stays down, but then the red line jumps up even above the blue line, and then both of them seem to be jumping off the charts. Now notice that the temperature change really isn't that big. I mean, right through here, it was right about 13.8 degrees Celsius as a global average. And then in the latest year, it went up to 14.4. Uh, uh, that would be um, 0.6 degree difference, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if we're thinking about an overall average in the year, that's quite a big jump, 0.6. So I want to come back to this idea of climate change is occurring. The Earth is getting warmer. The level of CO2 has risen. And what can we do about it? So on one side, we got people that, again, we have to do something today. The Earth's going to end. We're all going to die. No, it's, it's not. I mean, it, it, if it does continue to change over a long period of time, it will get worse and worse, but it's not going to happen today. And when you act crazy like that, most people just tune you out. So they're not going to listen to you. Whereas if you're over on this side, and you're like, it's natural. Earth happens, it, it happens like this all the time. Well, it really doesn't happen all the time. And that's really not taking initiative. That's really not thinking win-win for everyone. Because there are some things that we can do to try and help out. So let's come back here to the middle. And let's think about what are some things that we can do, right? What, as humans, what can we do to help this situation out? So I was a little bit surprised by this. I asked myself, you know, what is the biggest producer of CO2? And in my head I was thinking, well, it's probably all of us mouth breathers, right? <sighs> well, we're breathing out CO2 every time we breathe. Well, it's, it's not actually us. Let me show you. So this is from the Environmental Protection Agency. And if we look down here at this graph, it's not going to move over. Uh, the biggest thing is 29% of our CO2 comes from our transportation. We got electricity at a close second at 28%, and we got industry coming in at 22%. Okay, so let's talk about these three things. We got transportation, electricity, and industry. Well, when we think of transportation, we know all of the vehicles that we drive, unless you got an electric car. I mean, they're burning gas, they're burning diesel, all of those things burning through your car, and out the exhaust pipe comes a bunch of CO2. And the more people there are, the more cars that drive, the more pollution we're creating, the more CO2 release, we release in the atmosphere. And a lot of people say, well, this is easy, right? Let's just all have electric cars. No problem, right? They don't emit CO2. Well. What they do do is they require electricity, right? Which is number two on our list, okay? If we all just move transportation down into electricity, this number two is gonna become twice as big, right? We're gonna need twice as much electricity to charge electric cars. So, what do we do there? So number two, electricity is a huge producer of CO2 because we still get most of our power from burning coal. So what that works is we, we burn coal, it produces uh, a bunch of heat, it, it boils water, all the steam from the water turns a turbine, the turning turbine can then generate electricity. So we do have alternatives to coal, um, but you guys all know solar panels, we got uh, windmills, we got all these different things. Um, the problem is we just don't have enough of those things and they cost a lot of money in order to go all the way that way. And so uh, the other reason coal, I mean, that produces a ton of jobs for people. A lot of people work in the coal industry getting coal, and then a lot of people work on these uh, electricity farms where they burn the coal and they, they produce electricity. So do we want to get rid of all those people's jobs? 
Number three on the list is industry. I mean, those are all the factories, those are all the, the, the product making plants that we have here in the United States. So again, that goes back to uh, people's jobs, right? And this is a huge amount of work that people have. This is what they do. We go to these factories, they help make products. We enjoy these products every single day. Do we really want to shut those down? So guys, this kind of brings us to the project part of this whole discussion, is what can we do, okay? So the easy answer for that is, you know, let's all use electric cars. Let's all just build windmills everywhere. Let's have solar panels that cover our entire state. Now, all those things aren't really feasible, right? I mean, our state doesn't have enough money to build us a school, yet alone put a whole bunch of solar panels everywhere. So our project that you guys are going to be working on is you guys are going to be thinking about what can we do? What are, what are maybe, in, what's an invention? Maybe something we could change the way we do something. Something that would cut down the CO2 emissions that we produce, okay? Now it can be something small, it can be something big, but uh, you guys are going to be thinking about that and you're going to create a project where you are going to design this whole product. And when I say design, I mean you're going to draw it and you're going to think about how exactly it could work. Uh, you're going to put it down on paper. You're going to have a half page written part of this assignment where you explain in detail how it works and why it's going to cut down CO2 emissions, how it's going to help us uh, reduce the amount of CO2 so that we hopefully reduce the global average temperature. So I have included a rubric to help you guys out to know how it's going to be graded. Uh, the biggest thing is I want this idea to be your own. I want it to be original. I don't want you to come up with a drawing of um, like a windmill and say, oh, my idea is to create a windmill. Well, that's already been created, right? Uh, you can't have just a solar panel, but I mean, but we've already got solar panels, right? I want something original that you guys think of that can help really cut down the CO2. So um, there's lots of ways that maybe you could use windmills in a different way that they haven't been used. Maybe use a solar panel in a way that never has been thought of. Things like that are okay. Just make sure you're not copying someone else's idea already, right? That whole plagiarism thing, that's a big deal. I'm giving you guys until March 2nd to get this done, so you have some time. I really want you to put some thought into this. Um, and then also in, in your drawing, I want you to do a really good job. I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, Mr. Pearson, I'm not a good drawer. You know, that's not what's important. I wanna see that you put forth effort. I don't want something that I can tell you, you did in like a minute, uh, 12.30 last night, right before you went to bed. I want you to put some effort into it, do a good job. And trust me, I can tell if you put effort into it. It's not that hard. Just some final thoughts to maybe help you guys out. Um, just in this video, I've talked about solar power, I've talked about wind power, um, coal power. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can get power from. So you guys can do some research, figure out uh, what do other countries do, what do other places do. In Nevada, we're a little bit limited because we don't have that much water, but I mean, what are some things we could do that could probably help us out, even if it's just a little bit that we aren't doing right now? Because if we add up a whole bunch of those little bits, pretty soon we'll get a big difference. So just some thought, and uh, give us some thought, and I will be giving more instruction um, in the days that follow, probably next week. Maybe I'll get another one of these sweet videos. Trent, I see you. Don't make fun of me. I'm watching you. And uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes.